Hey, before we kick the show off, you guys already know that we got to talk about our friends at Miller Lite. Uh, listen, it's opening day. It's Miller season. It's opening day. It's Miller season. It's always Miller season, but there's always a special couple days of the year that make it a little bit more special. I mean, you can use it for all sorts of things. I like to do like a brat on opening day, get a little beer brat going, finish that Miller Lite, get the onions and peppers going, wash it, sit down perfectly. Miller Lite, yes. I mean, you can't beat that company. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I it's- can't wait. You know how they, we're going to be at the Sox games. So they serve Miller products mm-hmm. at the stadium, which is beautiful. Those 16 ounces are yes, nice. Yep. I'm pumped. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and uh, you guys got to get in your Miller Lite. I mean, it's uh, until uh, kickoff comes around, we got baseball season. Enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. You get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash midshow, or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brown Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. The official start of drinking outside season. Yes. All right, bing, bang on that note. Welcome to the mid-show. Uh, opening day. Opening day. Uh, so we will be joined by two Cubs guys, two local Cubs Twitter guys. We've yep. got um, Michael Cerami from Bleacher Nation. He's been on the show before. And mm-hmm. then we also have Joe from Obvious Shirts. He joins us. Big Cubs fan. Obviously, everyone knows his merch. Uh, we chop it up with them for a good 55 minutes just talking yeah. Cubs. Talking we had a Cubs baseball. day. Yeah. We had a Cubs day. I feel like normally we, we've done the 108 guys to do White Sox stuff. We did that maybe a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, we figured we'd do the North Side with these two boys. So yeah. it was a good time. So it was nice. But, I mean, just the beauty of today. We just got to get into that. Ho- host brings eternal, baby. Yeah. Get the grills going. Get the dogs going. It, it is it is one of my favorite days of the year and i love when they have you know all the day games for baseball too you know that's like it's it is if it has like that feel almost it's different than march madness but it is the feel or it is a national holiday sort of yeah a lot less at stake yeah it's just a different vibe like, but everybody feels they're in it even like to it like to a degree like i remember last year this year's different okay because with the white Sox, but last year dave you know, he's all negative all winter long. You get the opening days like, let's go win a goddamn division. Yeah. And like I think everybody has a little like one percent, like maybe if everything comes together, we can have a fun year. Yeah, for sure. And just like ushering into that stadium for the first time. Yep. It's just a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Everyone's just walking in, they got their head down. Maybe there are some opening day trumpets playing. Mm-hmm. You know, the band's there. People are still, peanuts, peanuts, you Smoke know. Smoke wafting through the air. Yeah, you see the guys with their t shirts. Yep. Uh, just the sounds, the sticks. too. The yes. sounds. It's all all of it. It's it's fantastic. So I can't wait to get out to uh, Dallas, the South Side today. Yeah. And then we'll be at uh, Wrigley Field on Monday for Cubs Home Opener. It's romantic. Yeah, it is, Dad. It it's is romantic. romantic. How can you not be romantic about baseball? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Dave's doing something right now, but he will be joining us during the Cubs interview. So mm-hmm. he'll, be, he'll be here giving his takes on that. And then obviously we've heard a lot of his, uh, White Sox. We know how he feels the about the White Sox. Weeks. weeks yeah. yeah. Like, I, like that's the thing too. We're like, ah, Dave, like, like he's not even going to give us uh let's go win a division. No, he won't. He's, he's just, broken. He's dead. He's down and so out. He tried to drag us down to the mud a little bit today too with the, with the Cubs talk, but we didn't let him do it. We yeah. rallied. Yeah. And he, you know, if you listen to the Tuesday show, he was okay with us coming to opening day. Mm-hmm. That's when you really know. He's defeated. That he's just yeah. done. It's like let the enemy walk right in. We've yeah. already lost. Because he would never. Yeah. Want, let last Just last year. And he was not even like. His glass was barely full. Yeah, he had a sip in there. Yes. Yeah. And he was still like, nope, you guys aren't allowed. You're not allowed. This is my day. You're not coming. No. He banned me from the postseason or uh, from <laughs> opening day spaces. And, uh, yeah, so it was just not allowed. It's, it's, it's normally it's his day. It's yeah. It's his day. Now he just And he always goes to opening day. Yeah. Like, that's, that's like, I do love that about Dave, too, where whatever job he's had, as long as I've known him, He doesn't work opening day. He goes to the ballpark, and I think that's a nice tradition. Yeah, it is. It it, it is. And uh, last year was my first year going to Wrigley's, and uh, it it was it was great. So anyone who's going, we'll see out there. We're going to both of them. I'm going to try to break my PR this year for Cubs games. What's your uh, set it last year? It was 15 games. Oh, that's 15 games and like 29 hot dogs. So I think I'm going to try to beat both. Did you really tell your hot dogs? Oh yeah, really? Yeah, it was at least one every game. So So you're doing double. I, I mean, 15. Uh, yeah. I do like one when I first get in and then one around the seventh. Okay. Yeah. Double kinda, dog. Yeah. And I like I like the- uh, What is it? Six bucks a dog? 
I don't, I don't, they're free in, in my brain. Once, Come on, I, once I'm in there, once I'm in there, their money doesn't count. Give me the full Rovell. I can't do that. I don't even know what they cost, but I do have a particular place that I go to. I in go their to, place? Yeah. They get the grilled Viennas on the. Uh, you're going to the stand. You're not getting it from the vendor. Correct. Okay. I mean, I will get it from a vendor, yeah. but like my preference is to go down to uh right field. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure we got a vendor dog last year. Yeah, no, I'll do that too. My my preference is that Vienna stand. It's in. It's on the. It's on the first base line, down yeah. towards the corner. And I know we're just sitting here, just sucking off baseball, which is you know, it's cool, it's deserved. It's America, and it's awesome. But there is a little different when you see the you see the glass and you see like the the glistening of the hot dogs. You yeah. see the onions. Different than just seeing like a a tin foil. Totally. Pepper, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's great. So it's a lot. It's a lot different. Um. But yeah, I think we could, could probably just hop into the Cubs guys here. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, that that's Michael Cerami uh, from Bleacher Nation one more time, and uh, Joe, Joe Joe Johnson from, uh, obvious shirts. So mm-hmm. let's just hop right into it. Whoosh! All right, so now we're in the interview portion of the show. We're joined in studio by uh, Michael Cerami from Bleacher Nation and Joe from Obvious Shirts. We did our uh, little podcast with the 108 about a month ago. Did like a White Sox pulse mm-hmm. check. So that's what we're doing with the it's Cubs. Flatline with opening. Yeah, flatline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the vibes are going to be a little better. So Michael, welcome in. Joe, welcome in. Thanks for being here. And let's get a vibe check to kick things off. We'll start with you, Michael. I mean, it's best vibes around the team in a few years, at least. Um, I do think that a little bit of that was undercut yesterday in the last like yeah. week and a half when Montgomery and Snell and Chapman and all these guys are signing for two years and twenty five mm-hmm. million or whatever the exact sort of deal we're supposed to. The Cubs are supposed to be, you know, right there getting. Uh, but I think this is the best team they've had in a few years. I think it's probably a little bit better than the projections. I, I like all the players. Feels like a brand new team from the old. You know, uh, yep. group that we had, so that's like kind of fresh. Just so I'm Kyle, going Kyle Hendricks is the last. Yeah, he, well, last guy, and right? just Carl Edwards Jr. They had him in camp. But oh, okay. He, yeah. But he, but he already left. So okay. it's just down to him. And now David Ross was the other one, but he's yeah. gone too. Yep. So well, yeah, good, good vibes. Good vibes, Joe. Yeah. Uh, it's more of the yeah. same. Yeah, vibes are vibes are high. I think Cody getting Cody solidified the vibe. Yep. Um, I'm a I'm a big vibe guy, and I think he is Cody's like. He's just one of those players that having him in your clubhouse, I think his camaraderie, his he like lifts the team chemistry. I think that's worth that's worth wins at the yeah. end of the year. So Well, that's like exactly what the White Sox were telling us they're trying to do is like get good guys in there and surround themselves with those kind of teammates. And we hung out with uh Hap and Steele in uh Arizona. Thank you for that. Yep. And uh we uh that's like that sh- shined off right away. Oh yeah. Like you you could tell like that's where like a lot of things are going well with the team. Yeah, and it, to your point about Bellinger, it did feel like that was the thing that the fans needed for the good vibes because yeah. that yeah, they sure did. That took forever. I think the team would have been like, "What the fuck?" Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like, seems like he's a very popular guy. After talking to Hap and Steele, that he's he is a like he's a vibes guy. I mean, makes everybody feel better and like having that bat where it's like you now you can slot everybody properly in your lineup and he can play first, center, yeah. wherever you need him. He's just like a, he's a ball player, right, Dave? I like ball players. Ball players are good things to be, especially if they're good ball players. Yeah, I mean, you would have had player, Mike Talkman in center field leading off. You know, maybe if it if, if it yeah. wasn't for Bell. Pride of Palatine. Mm-hmm. Pride of Palatine. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dansby Swanson like kind of called it out at the Cubs con, and like for a player of his stature to say that, I mean, I think he speaks for the entire clubhouse there. But yeah, that was that's surprising when he did that, and then. I was like, if the Cubs don't get this done after Dansby said that, yeah. that looks real bad. I mean, so. even Hoyer ended up saying something at Cubs Con. He was like, yeah, you got to lean into it. Like, he was like, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just go sign him. Yeah, but so I guess we could we could kind of take it from the top. We could go with rotation. Um, obviously, uh, I think we kind of know, or we, we, we have an expectation for Steele, right? Where is the uh, – is, is Hendricks – is he going to slate in uh, number two? Have they said that yet, or is that kind yeah. of expected? Yeah. I think that's where I think he's going to be starting the second game. You know, if you want to call him the number two, yeah. I don't know. I think the hope is that Shota probably becomes that guy mm-hmm. by the end of the year. I mean, I, you guys see his fastball; it's yeah. it's incredible. I mean, we read all about it, but yeah. actually seeing it, you're like, "Geez, that thing moves mm-hmm. unnaturally." Did you see the clip of him yesterday? I, I don't know. Yeah, like that back foot slide. Oh, the like back foot slider! Literally yeah. hit the guy yeah. in the Cardinals in the back of his foot, yeah. and they swung and missed. Like it, that guy. 
Like I've all I've seen is clips, so I'm very excited to mm-hmm. see him in action. Yeah, he seems he seems legit. I think and then after that, I think Tyon had a better second half last year than people really remember. Um Jordan Wicks and Javier Saad, I'm like I'm all for. I, mm-hmm. I think those guys are great. Um and then the Cubs I mean, the strength of the Cubs rotation this year is just their depth. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean they have mm-hmm. extreme depth. Um Running it down like Steele, Hendricks, Shoda, Tyone, uh, Wicks, Assad, Wesneski, Drew Smiley, and then you got Ben Brown, Cade Horton, um, sort of waiting in the wings to be promoted. Depth is not the problem, um, but that's also why I think when you see those deals for Snell and Montgomery, those guys would have slotted in as the second best starter on the, yeah, on the maybe team. Maybe the first, even. Maybe even the yeah. first. So that's why it's a little like. They could have upped their ceiling there. I'm yeah. fine with the floor. They're not the rotation the isn't gonna crater it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at the depth chart right now, it's like a solid like nine deep when you start tapping into the yeah. entire forty. And that like you you guys are talking about vibes. If I'm the Cub if I'm a Cubs fan right now, I would not have been happy with that offseason. I, I think that I mean obviously they're bringing uh, Bellinger back, but that is – they already had Bellinger last year. Mm-hmm. They didn't do anything on top of that offensively. And then, like you said, there there's a glaring – I'm looking at this. I see Steele could be a number one if he builds on what he did last year. Obviously, he was awesome last year. They don't have that number like two. Bonafide two. Bonafide yeah. two, I, yeah. I, I think, like, I could be wrong, uh, Sarami. I'm curious what you think. I think the reason why the vibes are higher than maybe they should be is this team gives me a lot of 2015 vibes. Like, with Steele replacing Lester, mm-hmm. um, there wasn't... I don't think we have huge expectation, but it's like the the team's really close. They're buddies. They're good friends. They obviously play really well together. But there's just something about this team that, like, really reminds me of 2015, and, like, that's an exciting time for Cub fans, obviously. But that's what I'm saying. Push it's, it over the top. Well, yes. And they don't yeah. have, they don't have over the, the Arietta-type guy. Yeah, they definitely that's don't. Right. I mean, that we was, didn't even know we'll we had the area that type guy that I at 25. Like, exactly, that's my point. He had, he had started coming point. on in 14. 14. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but but this is what – did you guys see what Jed Hoyer said? I think it was yesterday. It was to John Greenberg in the Athletic. He, he said something like, you know, we're a little bit higher on our internal projections than the industry every team is. But, you know, we're going to need some things to um, go right for us to have a really successful season. It's like, did you just admit that? Like, yeah. it, it, why are we not the on like paper? It, wh- like what are we straight. stopping? Yeah. yeah, why are we stopping just short of being the on paper and best it has team in the worst division? With anything other than money, money. Oh, money. I thought you wanted it was like <laughs> getting money. on base. I've seen, money. I've seen no, well, the, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's yeah. it's no, it, right. it's only money. And the Cubs, I don't think any team should use money as as an excuse ever. Winning should always be at the focal point, aside from budget. If you have a chance to be a world, an actual true blue World Series contender, spend the money. And I don't think the Cubs did that this offseason. I would have been outraged. I, I do think season. that there's probably an opportunity to add somebody at the deadline to to be that number. There two. was opportunity to and add Blake Snell. No, I know Jordan Montgomery until yesterday for yeah, yesterday for, for no yeah. prospects for nothing yeah. for nothing just for money uh, yes. so okay. I, I have a literally Financial. article coming out probably before anyone's even going to hear this uh this podcast tomorrow. about there you go yeah. about exactly this stuff and and I questioned this entire point and it comes down to two things though for the cubs one they're right up against the luxury tax right now mm-hmm. okay they're like 235 out of and it's 237 yeah and and what Jed Hoyer likes to do is wait as long as possible to make any decision. And so what this does is this buys him to the deadline to decide, hey, we can trade some pieces away and get under, or we can add and go over. Mm-hmm. And it's like, again, that's all well and good until you lose your division or the wild card by one game. And and that's the sort of yeah. thing that Montgomery from the beginning of the year could could positively impact. So. Mm-hmm. I I understand what he's doing, but it's a little it's a little like too cautious for me for my taste. Mm-hmm. But that's what he would tell you is that the longer they have to make these decisions, um, the more comfortable they'll be going over. But that's where they stopped. I have a question for the group. What do you think, owners slash GMs, probably owners, like what do you think they ultimately care about? And I'm generalizing. I'm putting every owner in a bucket because. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm a very competitive person. I'm like cutthroat competitive, like almost to a 
point where it's a fault of mine. Like, I just want to win. I would do whatever it fucking took to win. And, like, Jed's a really smart guy. I do, like, I'm one of the few Team Jed guys. I really like him. But I think, like, him and Ricketts and other owners, they try to they try to flex their intelligence. They don't try to flex their rings. They don't try to, fl- and f- like, flex how much they spend. They try to flex, like, winning with smarts and doing, like, being smarter and... It's like wins per dollar. Well, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like yeah. why, right, why right. would you try to win 90 games if 86 games gets you into the playoffs is what Jed Hoyer would say. That's like, what all owners think. Yeah. That's how they think exactly. and operate. But if I'm an owner, I just... I got to buy I'm, those extra four wins. I'm George like, yeah. Steinbrunner. I, like... Yes. Back in the 90s, he got... So Everyone. much shit for buying his World Series, but nobody talks about that now. They just know that he won more than any other yeah. owner ever. Like, yeah. what? what why is they, that a Why is that a bad thing? It's not or it, have a, Why does it have yeah. a negative stigma attached to it? Because I remember being a young idiot fan in the '90s and early 2000s, and I'm like, oh fuck him, he's the worst. He totally same. Buy, but like, but now he's doing what he's supposed to be doing as an owner. But that was fun too because it made them the evil empire. Yeah, exactly. Like they were the right? villain. And his oh, kid it's doesn't. It's not like the Cubs like are at risk of becoming that. The Reds. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, or either like way. Yeah. Right? And yeah. He, I'm saying that's not like they're, oh, they've been spending way too much. Right. Like, no, let's start spending a little. The guy like, no one was Chicago crying Cubs. when they didn't go get Otani. Right? right? It was like, would it be cool? Yeah. But. Uh, so that's the whole. Yeah. I like, I understand not getting Otani. I even understand not getting Yamamoto at three hundred and twenty-five million, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not trading a shit ton for uh, Juan Soto. Not uh, trading a ton for Tyler Glass. Now you didn't have a chance at Aaron Nola. He wanted to stay. Fine. Two years. All of that. All these guys get for two Blake years. Snell and Jordan. Mon- I mean, Clevenger's still available. That'd be. I mean, he's more depth like to yeah. what they already have. Yeah. But like guys like him are for pennies right now. Yeah. And 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 a team like the Cubs should be. All over that. JD Martinez, Justin Turner, these could have they could have DH, they could have put, you know, uh third base for Matt Chapman. Yep. Like, yeah. There well, were there were opportunities for low dollars, low risk, no long term impact. You don't have to trade prospects, it's only money. And and you're just and you like are definitely better, assuming yeah. injuries are yeah. like Thanks for making me feel it's the day before opening day. Come on. I'll, I'll, I was just, he's dragging us down into the I, mud. The try- vibes were high before Dave started. I, I'm not trying to negatively impact the vibes for the Cubs or or fans elsewhere, but because like, why? I, I saw this I saw this 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 chart today. I don't know who Brooks Gate is, but the Oakland A's opening day payroll was eighteen million dollars higher in two thousand seven seven, seventeen years ago than it is tomorrow, opening day. That's like it's it's that should be I, illegal. I, I bitch about the White Sox at a micro level on a macro level. I have an extreme issue with ownership across baseball. Yeah, and, there should if to this have exact a, point. It, uh, the, how is Jordan Montgomery not a cub? Yeah, that is 200 innings every year of solid pitching. Yeah, yeah he I think he had 94 starts over the last three years, which is like it's, one of the most it's every fun. year, every year. I, I know the Japanese guy. I, I'll never show to. Yeah, Shota. Um, he's a lefty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who else? Who else is a lefty in the rotation? Steel. Steel. Oh, Steel. Yeah. And Jordan. Wicks. Okay, mm-hmm. and Wick. So yeah. they have lefties. No, they, but have, it's they like, have too many lefties. If anything, yeah. but yeah. but the, my point is is that two for fifty. Yeah. And it might not even be. It might just be one for twenty five. That is inexcusable to me, and it's something that should be continually called out by fans. Because if it isn't, it will never, ever change. And I do feel like, and, and you were kind of leading the charge on that. It's a great day to sign Cody Bellinger. Kind of every so day. I, I was annoying myself how hard I was pushing that. <laughs> but then it felt like once that happened, everyone's just like, all right, let's start the season. Yeah. And like that that like anger and that push, at least from where I was sitting and watching, it wasn't there to go get that last piece. I don't know what just happened with my throat there. Yeah. That last piece. Okay. Like no one, once Bellinger signed, like the fan base kind of just relaxed a little mm-hmm. bit. Didn't really like kind of hold their feet to the fire. Not that it would have made a difference, but it did feel like well, they everyone, could kind of fall back on hey, if we don't collapse there in the last whatever six ten games, like we would have been there too. So it's kind of the yeah. same team. Just run it back, and we'll be in the playoffs, and things will improve. I mean, but, so here's here's the other thing though. So fine, we're be- we're betting on a Bellinger bounce back, or excuse me, to replicate the mm-hmm. success he had last year, and. It's fine. It's probably a pretty good bet. And the team played better than their actual record was last year. But here's the point of this all. The whole offseason was like um, setting pitching aside. So you got to get someone to either be Bellinger or replace Bellinger. Then you need another bat. That was what the Cubs were missing. They went out and got Michael Bush, um, who's 
supposed to be very good, and I believe he will be still a top 50 prospect. Mm -hmm. He's getting the keys to first base from opening day. Like, there's no question about it. That is who they're betting on being the upside for this team. And I love the trade. I think it was a good trade. I think it was a pretty ballsy trade. Um, but I want you're betting on a prospect. I mean, yeah. it's he's a prospect. And he has not proven it at the big league level yet. He's 26, so it's not like he's 22. You know, so th it's a big roll of the dice to be like, yep, this is where we made our... In the PCL, thing. you put up video game numbers mm -hmm. a lot of times, especially yeah. as a 26-year-old prospect. But I do think that he is going to walk in and mash from day one. Yeah, I mean... I, I think he... I was... I couldn't believe that's all they had to deal for him. Uh, Jackson Ferris I mean, is like a big... Yeah. He was... He's like a... He was a second rounder who should have been a first yeah. rounder and has only been well you know, liked since he started right. playing. So it, you know, it's one of those things like he's the, Ferris is the sort of guy that you can use to go be, and maybe not a centerpiece, but like a number two, strong number two piece mm -hmm. for like a big giant massive yeah. trade that, you know, the Cubs don't do that often, but you know, could. So that's what you're giving up. Right? You're giving up a really great second mm -hmm. centerpiece. You know, I know that that's, it doesn't make sense, but you know, I, I know what yeah, you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and that, that kind of thing is what they gave up for another prospect, which is, that's like, you're making that. That wasn't there. a 40 man thing. What was it? No, like a crunch? no, no, no. Cause he wouldn't have been, uh, due for at least two years. Probably. No. So. Yeah. Hey, let's pause from talking to the guys right now because we want to talk about Chevy drive, Chicago.com. Uh, the auto show is long over by now, but the best deals at your local Chevy dealer are still going. If it's that time for a new car, your local Chevy dealer has something for you. The all-new Equinox tracks and Blazer are SUVs you'll want to test drive and drive often. Giving everything from style to comfort, safety, and plenty of room, there is a Chevy SUV for you. There is. Do you think there's a, do you think we can get a pink one for Caleb? Yeah, that's fine. Why pink, not? Pink Tahoe for Caleb? Yeah. I think that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Head awesome. to ChevyDriveChicago.com to learn more about these cars and find your local Chevy dealers today. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. You just hopped on the website and you're like, this is the color I want. This is the features I want. Yeah. They make it and then they, they connect you with the right people um, and they walk you through the whole process, make it super easy. So I got the, I gave them, I'm a simple fella. You know that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I only want black, white, or gray. They had a gray, went with it. Silver, I guess. It's uh, It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Go to ChevyDriveChicago.com. Find your Chevy. It's that yep. easy. All right, let's hop back into it. But yeah, it's, I don't like, especially after what I just went through as a fan, I do not like gambling on prospects. Well, right. Like, obviously prospects break your heart, but um, I, I think that the pieces, especially defensively around um, Bush to kind of, you know, stick his toe in the water and, and, and kind of ease into a professional debut and landing. So I think he's going to be really good. I think he... Like, no one talks about him, Cubs yeah. fans. Cubs fans no. do not talk we about him. We barely brought it up yeah. until yeah. 20 Just minutes now. in. What, yeah, what do you yeah. think about, could you have a combined Team Bush? Team Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, and Morrell at third. If he if he's playing every day. It's like he's it, playing better defense. It, from what I've. Yeah, a little clips. He's made a few yeah, plays. That's but, what I'm basing it all. Right. Yeah. But is that enough? Is his bat every day at third as opposed to. You know, outfield Spurs, DH is is that if those two guys combined, is that enough to push the offense over the top in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, I I think Morel's about Morel, to have yes. an enormous offensive season. Like I yeah. I think he's going to be an absolute. He has only performed well so far. Mm -hmm. There's been dips, but his overall numbers are great, and the uh, the spikes are huge. Yeah. Um, between Seiya, uh, Bellinger. I, mean, I don't have to go down. This is like a good, it's a very good it's, lineup. It's all big it's leaguers. Yeah. It's they a good team. Big league. Yeah, these are big league players. And you know, to go back to the vibes thing, I think part of the reason Fuck. vibes are so good right now is because pretty much everybody on this team has like at least two more years of control. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of feel like you're like, all right, you know, let's win this year. Let's do great. But like, this isn't like our only or last shot. We're kind of building up towards something. Mm -hmm. We all know the prospects are coming, but there's like Hap, Swanson, Seiya, Shoda, Steele. These are all guys that are like 29 yeah. and under control for two to three more years. So it kind of just feels like we're secure and like the team's going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And it's just about like, will they ever by either by internal promotions or performance or external additions at the trade deadline or in the offseason go over the top and become the the Braves or the Dodgers. That's where we're like we're like teetering on the edge. Yeah. Like, can they be a, a next level team? Right now, they should win the division. They should. This is not a good division. The Cubs are good. But you know, yeah. a little Do you bit expect more. them to? Do you 
Yeah, both of I, you. I mean, I do. I'm an I'm a homer though. I'm an yeah. optimist. Like one thing that I think that nobody's talking about is how fucking good the defense is. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like their defense is so good, and like that's why I'm not really like I agree with White Sox, Dave. Like I another pitcher would have been nice, like with Snell or or Montgomery, but like our our defense is so good. And we have guys that throw ground balls and steal and Hendricks. Like, yeah, I I think like our I don't know the metrics around our defense. I spend my time thinking of T-shirts now and not reading <laughs> statistics. Fan graphs. The Cubs yeah. defense is very good. I th- it's I th- awesome. It's I very think, good. I think it's, shirt. I think it's yeah. better than what we even think or know, and that's gonna like be our saving. Well, I mean, up it's gonna the middle, get better it's as good too. As any in baseball, it's, yeah, it it's, is. it's about like, to get better though because PCA will play center and then him. Bellinger at first. Dude, that's that, upgrading at two spots. Gets, and yeah, I'm a big defense like. As a player, I played shortstop. I'm big, big defensive baseball player. Sucked at hitting, but like defense is kind of my jam, and like that's that type of shit gets me excited. And with PCA and center and belly at first, those games when we have Dansby and Nico, my my boy gas money behind the plate or whoever it is, like in PCA up strong up the middle, that that shit gets me excited. Like it really does, because that's gonna save us so many runs that we don't even know yet. What, I, I, what I, makes you guys bearish? Like, what makes you guys nervous about the season? Like, what's the thing where it's like, well, this... The Cardinals bringing up a random guy that I've never heard of that goes in 345. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Brewers outperforming their projections by 20 wins. <laughs> no, I think the biggest... The Reds are coming on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit, the Reds, yeah. That's the like Reds are a team that has, like, guys that throw 102 with, like, eight inches of cut and sink on any given pitch and... Yeah. Like can dominate on any single day and then just win like sixty games. And it, and it felt like last year is that there was that big series. I think it was in August, where it was Reds and Cubs, and I think Cubs took three out of four. I but remember. It, yep. But it felt like both teams were a, a year ahead of schedule competitively, mm-hmm. and then the, the Cubs made some signings too. And then the Cubs win that series, and it's like, all right, leave them behind. And the Cubs are going for it, and then the Cubs fell apart like yeah. two weeks later. And uh, I guess like. As a bearish thing, you guys are talking about PCA. You're talking about Horton. Like, what is the what is the realistic expectations for those guys and, and timelines? Because are they guys that could you know you talked about internally? When do you think the right time to bring those guys up? Because obviously neither one of them are going to be there opening day. No, yeah. So I think PCA is probably going to be a lot closer. I think what'll happen is, in fact, I'm pretty confident about this. I've sort of noticed like. I think it's entirely arbitrary, but it seems to be what the Cubs do. They look at 100 plate appearances as like a round like a time to start establishing a baseline and being like, okay, let's evaluate where they are right now. So I think if PCA goes out to Iowa, um, gets his feet under him, and then has like a solid 100 plate appearances, not necessarily his first, but just like where he is hitting and he's yes. doing it, he'll be up. Okay. And, he'll, and he'll be up, you know, and I'm hoping and I'm expecting that that'll be before June. Um, Kate Horton, I don't think that that's necessarily the same story. Um, he is a couple things. One, like, so Ben Brown's the other mm-hmm. big Cubs prospect that yep. when he comes up, he'll probably come up in relief, do the thing the Cardinals used to do for years. The Cubs like to do now is like, you bring a top prospect up, let him get, throw some bullets out of the pen, get used to big league hitters, get used to big league life, transition him into being a starter later down the line. It's kind of what they did with Steele. Mm-hmm. Um, and but for Horton, he's such a good pitching prospect that I don't think they're going to want to do that. I think they're going to want to bring him up to be in the rotation when he's ready. Kind of like Wicks last year then. Yeah. Yep. So I think that he might take more time. He's also just reached double A. So I mean, obviously, he's a phone call away. But yeah. I think he'll move to triple A. He'll get his starts there. And then you can maybe see him in the second half. But that's going to be like he's coming into the rotation to be a part of the rotation. You're not going to mess with him quite as much as you would with someone like Brown who – yeah, still has a great opportunity, a great chance to be a good starter. Yeah. But Horton, you're like, no, this is a this is the, the best pitching prospect the Cubs have had in two decades, maybe. I mean, he's legit. Since prior, yeah. maybe, yeah. Uh, I'm, Another fine guy that they just did. <laughs> I was gonna say real quick, I'm I'm bearish because Sarami, how many ga- how many one run games did the Cubs lose last year? It uh, felt like twenty. Yeah, I don't have it off. And we have the right. best manager that can manage and I love David Ross I do I love that I love David Ross but there were there were times last year that I was like I don't understand the move um I also remember losing a lot of games in the seventh inning eighth inning and then ultimately losing by one so having correct counsel I think is another variable that if we if we win half the games we lost by one run last year I think we're like six wins better and that's that's enough mm-hmm. yeah 
Um, and we have, you know, Alzelay's got another year of being a closer, or not another, his first year of being a closer under mm-hmm. his belt, more experience. Hector Neris is a much better setup man than anyone um, the Cubs had last year. And now you have your setup men from last year, uh, Merriweather and Leiter, in the seventh inning. Yep. One of them can attack lefties, one can attack righties. I mean, your seven, eight, nine is pretty solid uh, innings, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that'll help close those, those games out. Um, but, you know, circling back to the question, what makes me bearish? I'm knocking on wood if people aren't watching. If Justin Steele gets hurt, this is a very different rotation. That was scary last week. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a very different rotation. Yeah. Right? He got I mean, hit in the knee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's He's fine. Yeah. No, he and he yeah. said so, yeah. too. But just like seeing him like... It, yeah, no, it's, it's a little bit yeah. of a come to Jesus. Yeah, right? you're like, oh my God, Every, actually, what is this rotation? Yeah, 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 yeah. like him anchoring it is the, yeah. a lot riding on that. Yeah, for he sure. does. He like just talking to him down in Arizona. He strikes me as just like he's just a dog. Like he's he's, he's going to find a way to you know he he doesn't seem like a guy who will like randomly have a five ERA year in his career. Like he just seems like a guy who's going to figure out a way to get out no matter what. Like I. I fucking love that. Guy. I know. I he's, love that. He's guy. my favorite cub right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the, the man. He's the man. Everyone talks about how they re- he reminds them of Lester and like the way he pitches and stuff, but it's also like the presence. Yeah, I mean, he do- he does have a presence about him. He's got yeah. that. You know, yeah. you don't need that. You, some people are Kyle Hendricks on the mound yeah. and are great, but man, when Lester is up there and you're like, geez, I wouldn't want to yeah. be standing in the box across from him. How, how do you guys value the manager? Because that was other than Bellinger. That was their biggest move of the off season. So uh, is that? I know you you spoke to it a little bit. Like you love Ross, and but you think this is a significant upgrade. Like how, like that's the thing where it's like, how many wins is a manager worth? You're looking at me. Uh, yeah, both uh, of you, both <laughs> of you guys. You no, know, it's Dave. it's it's like the age old question. The Cubs valued it at the price of a good middle of the rotation dollars. starter. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> that's yeah, about yeah. about that much, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you know. Would you rather have Jordan Montgomery or? <laughs> or that's not, okay. that's like a very real question. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, the put it this way: the Brewers, five years in a row, were not supposed to be as good as they were, mm-hmm. and every year they were. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how else to. Th- there's no other. He's the conclusion. common denominator. Yeah, but yeah. that is Craig Council, and mo- you know they've tried to do studies on this in the past, and like I think the most extreme versions is it's like they say like three wins. I don't know if that's really true or if that's an outdated number but like at a certain point we can stop doing this thing and i'm the biggest numbers and data and advanced analytics guy i want a good manager that's going to make good decisions i don't need to quantify it i think that's just the right thing to fans do. as a whole especially guys like you and i that really look at it under a microscope with the advanced numbers and also that we i think we got to a point where we we've we didn't value that kind of stuff near enough. Yeah. We got away from the point, like just baseball guys, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think there has been a correction over the last few years. Cause like, if you would have told me even a few years ago, when the Sox hired Tony La Russa, I was like, Oh, it doesn't matter. You could put a monkey. Yeah. That lineup was so good on paper. Exactly. Like just, all right, they're going to score 10 runs a game. Uh, the starting staff should go seven. All right, give it to a wake them up in time to make a bullpen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Give it to Hendricks and there. Anybody, any asshole can do that. Yeah, lay off. My um, body. but obviously that is not the case. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've seen it very firsthand in this city. Um, and that's not to even say that Larusa was the problem. He was a problem, not the problem. But um, I, I, I would, I still think I'm at the point though, where most managers are kind of just there. And there's probably five that are really good and five that are dog shit. Pedro Griffel being one of them. <laughs> um, and I would I would put uh, Craig Council in that in that top the top five that top yeah. five yeah. Well, and I think it's, his a bunch of his value though. Um, it, it's so different than David Ross. Is that David Ross again? Who I really like too. I think he's awesome. He just I don't think it was. There's too if many. You can decisions. upgrade. You upgrade. You upgrade. You upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. But so Craig Council is going to be involved in organizational decision making much more than a regular manager, and certainly more than David Ross. David Ross was very in tight with the front office, no question about that. But he was sort of their groomed, yeah, you know, right, right, you know, right. sprouted plant that they are in control of. Whereas Craig Council is coming in from the outside and being explicitly asked to have input. Mm-hmm. So that's part of what you're paying for there too. It's not something that might. You hope it shows up from day one, season one, but it might also be something that they go like, this is the guy I want to target. 
And then he's helping in roster management as yeah. well as the actual game. Management. Set of fresh eyes, man. Yeah, yeah. a long way. New ideas. Yeah. yeah, not just the Boston, not just rating the Boston uh, yeah, yeah. front office yeah, for yeah. fifteen mm-hmm. years. Yeah, for real. No, that's big. Do you think there's a guy? Is there a guy who was on the team last year? You know, from this core that we've mentioned, that you're expecting more from this year? That you're like, hey, like that guy, he's got more in him. If if the number, yeah, Mervis. Or- <laughs> Man, Mervis is insane. Okay, he just, has, he just has to get a chance. He's yep. got to. He's yeah. kind of blocked now. I play. I he play, just has to get past Michael Bush and Cody. I Bowen. know. <laughs> I know. It breaks my heart. I mean, either way, the let the best let the best player win. I'm I'm a Cubs fan, so I'm never going to complain if if Bush is like going off. But like, I've I've played with guys that are like Matt, and Matt, his talent is insane. It's off the charts. His his exit velocity, and he actually does have a really good eye, to, like play discipline. He needs to get to the point in baseball, and baseball's a fucking mental grind. Like, it's arguably the hardest. I think baseball and maybe sinking an eight-foot putt to win the Masters is like A and B. But baseball in, in general is like a confidence game, and I think he has not got to that level of confidence. And if you if you go back, and I, and I know Matt, so like I really – kind of like nerded out and like went back to look at his minor league went back to his like time at duke he came into duke as a two-way player that played third base yeah so like this he's overcame things he he knows adversity and he knows how to overcome it i just wish we gave him more of a leash and if he gets to a level where he goes to the plate knowing that like i'm the baddest dude in the stadium he just has to get there and he'll never look back like once he gets there and gets confident it's. I think he could be one of the best hitters in the league. Now, going to the manager discussion, that is something that a manager can. That's a blessing. This is a blessing in disguise for him. I think. I. That's what I'm getting at. Yes, and that's something that a statistic can't measure. You right. know, totally. And there's that intrinsic value that you get out of a manager for something like that. I'd have never obviously said a word to Craig Council. I wasn't watching him under a microscope in Milwaukee. Um, as like he would, I would have if he were in the AL Central. But like that's the manager's job right there. Well, Getting the most out of players you, like him. Do you remember real quick? I don't mean to get off track, but do you remember last year when Rossi said, "I don't know if we have at bats for Morel." Yeah. yeah. And then the this year, of- Craig Council saying we are going to do whatever it takes to give him at bats. Mm-hmm. And I think what I learned in the last since the first statement was made, and then Craig Council statement was made. I've learned as a fan watching with my eyes the eye test that Morel needs to his bat needs to be in our lineup. His bat is like his bat is dynamic. Um, it's electrifying. So that's a great example of like God, I love you, Ross, but like you were you missed that. You were completely wrong there. And that has like ripple effects. But that goes to that goes to the same point about with the front office. Because if the front office was like, hey, we think we think Morel should start out in Iowa, then Ross effectuates that he makes it happen he explains why there's not going to be a bats to go around because that's their goal if craig council says i think this should happen his voice is going to carry more weight in the actual rostering decisions and that can you know change you know the opportunities for someone like matt mervis or morale or whoever yeah are you um, saying that because ross didn't want that responsibility or because no. i i don't think it's that i think it's i think it's ross retired um got some work in the Cubs front office, did some stuff at the ESPN and stuff. And the Cubs, this is just all my, you know, understanding of how it happened, not like anything I was told. It, it seems to me like they were like, listen, you come and work with us for a little bit, stay around baseball. When the opportunity arises, you're going to be the manager mm-hmm. we do. And here's our plan. And Ross, listen, do whatever, do whatever you got to do to be a big league baseball manager. They say, we don't want you to be involved in making, you know, yeah, decisions. Yeah, yeah, right. mm-hmm. Then, okay, cool. I'm in the Cubs dugout. Managing one of the greatest franchises, you know, in popularity. Wrigley Field every day. Yeah, Wrigley Field every day. You do whatever it takes. Craig Council doesn't need that. He could he could be the manager of any team he wants at any point for the highest salary in baseball. So so if they're like, hey, we don't think Morrell can play third, and he's like, yes, he can. (laughs) Then he plays third. And he plays third. And and that's what I think that I I do genuinely genuinely think that that's what they're looking for. and and Craig Council had an awesome quote. I don't even I don't know if it was Cubs convention or spring training. Some beat reporter asked him like, you know, what do you expect from a player like if they come up to you and say, hey, Skipper, what are you you know looking for me on day one? And he said something to the effect of like, to be super nervous, to shit your pants, to not do well. Like that's what I expect from you mm-hmm. on day one. You're a rookie. You should be bad. And that's like, wow, what a really great way to 
to take the pressure off of someone. It's yeah. like, my expectation is that you do nothing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you are you should be nervous. Yeah. This you're, is big yeah. leagues, you know? It's, it's the truth. Hey, let's take another break here because I want to talk about Dave and Buster's. The chance of getting a perfect bracket is 1 in 120.2 billion, <sighs> which is crazy. Uh, that's, so, like, it's... That's one of those numbers that I just, I, I can't compute it. It's too big. It's too big. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why throughout the tournament, uh, they are uh, washing away your sorrows with $2 beers. Terms and conditions apply on that. And uh, if anyone has a bracket that's been busted, DM which Dave and Busters. With which a picture, is everyone. Yeah, it's everyone. Yep. Uh, with a picture of their bracket across social media handles. And in a reward, Dave and Busters will be giving away 1 million chips of free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply, but hurry. All chips will be given away and must be redeemed at your local Dave and Busters before the tournament ends. Come to Dave and Busters for $2 beers all tournament long and DM your busted bracket to Dave and Busters for free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. Get over there. Still a lot of good games in this tournament. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. And if you go and it's like one of those things, I don't know if you, about you, but I get stressed out watching it. Sometimes I need to just walk away. In my apartment, I don't really have many places to walk away to. So if you're at Dave and Buster's, get your snacks, get your apps, get a few Papa shots up, get a few uh, ski balls in, come back, and maybe, you're, maybe your bracket's not as busted as you thought it was going to be. I got to get myself to that Rosemont one. Yeah. Right by me. Rosemont has everything. I do. If you got a Dave and Buster's, you got everything. All right, let's get back into Cubs talk. I remember, like, first at bats at fall ball in college, I'd be nervous just because I hadn't... Wooden was, bats. You hadn't seen... I don't even like when there's a big crowd at Sluggers. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> starting to sweat. We, we did yeah. this free throw thing a couple weeks ago here. I don't know if you guys saw it. We did, like... You had to make 42 in a row or something. Yeah. And they called me in at, like, 6 a.m. to come in here and shoot because I have the same name as Portnoy. Long story short, I'm shooting free throws, and I was, like... A nervous fucking wreck, like oh. <laughs> yeah. How much matters? Because like, you don't so, want to let yeah. your you don't want to let your coworkers down. You're a team I made player. One he, four. Doesn't, he doesn't care. About <laughs> no, I don't care about that. <laughs> it was a, I'm not a team player. The I'm a guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That, that, but yeah. That, that that like hearing, but like I'll say this: not I don't want to make it a compare contrast necessarily to Ross versus. Um, versus uh council but like this is something that i heard years ago while he was playing that always stuck with me and his last year obviously he was like an extension of the coaching staff obviously mm -hmm. he had the big home run against the, the andrew at Miller. the time the indians in the first inning but um he i guess he would walk around the clubhouse every day when everybody starts reporting for game practice whatever and he would shake their hand look them in the eye and then like head on over to uh Madden and be like, all right, player A, he's hung over. Player B, sounds like he's got uh, like girlfriend issues. Player Player C, put him in the lineup today. He's ready to fucking go. Not obviously to that extent, but um, just like that, like he he would You're walk saying around. He's a snitch. Not not not. I didn't want to paint him <laughs> no, as no, a no, snitch. I just like he was he was getting the he was gauging the the mental yeah. state of of the clubhouse and as a team. Is that why the lineups were different every single game that made like sometimes no sense? I I I, I meant to say that story is like a good thing, and I know it didn't come <laughs> yeah. off that no, way, but, I, it, I, but it like yeah, I, I it, Ross was a good manager, and I know he did stupid things like the not having lineup continuity always drives me crazy. Dude, as a player, like that's it, so it, frustrating. And Ross played; he should know that. You know, I'm surprised that like. Well, wait. There was a, there really... was there was over there was some at some points the criticism was that there was too much continuity, like Ian Happ batting third every day. Every Ian Happ's day, my yeah. guy, but he was the only constant. He but like that was like uh, he he stuck to his guns for that for mm -hmm. against the numbers of everybody in the entire industry being like well, I don't know if that makes that much sense. But, I think Madden. I think Madden like rubbed off on Rossi. There yeah. the yeah. I I think uh, it's weird that. I don't know, like David Ross has played with a lot of really, really good players in his career. He's had an awesome career. And I think we all knew, like when he was still a player, when he came to the Cubs, we knew like, oh, that guy's going to be a manager one day. And yeah. catchers make great managers. Yeah, Like catchers, it just blows my mind that he wasn't as sharp of managing the bullpen, being the catcher, knowing the tendencies, knowing like by looking at somebody's delivery, if, they're, if their arm angles off. like And you know that. So like, like I caught in college, I knew that. So like, I could tell that. Shit. Why I'm just it shocks me that I know that David Ross was like kind of a yes man. I'm just shocked that like, like why I, yeah. I feel like he didn't. I feel like 
he probably didn't always agree, but he didn't push back. And I kind of wish he would have because I think it would have served him better. Well, I think my biggest criticism of <laughs> David Ross on the Shit on David Ross podcast <laughs> uh, is that he seemed desperate to lean on one philosophy, and that's you can roll with your veterans. Um, and that's I hate that. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. I mean, and that's Jim what Leland, it was. Give me talent over He's going to keep, he's going to keep, you know, rolling Mark Leiter Jr. out there, even though he does not have the one pitch that makes him effective and hasn't since the middle of August. And over and over, he is the eighth inning guy. So I get this, that this guy's like a dog and has been around and yeah, has the, given you a bunch of good innings. You can't. The PCA stuff was so weird last year. PCA me. and Canario. Like, yeah, what are yeah, we yeah, doing? Canario, yeah, comes and, in, it's a grand slam. Yeah. Maybe I, it wasn't a good manager. <laughs> <laughs> This is, yeah. this is not what we intended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David Ross, we love yeah. you. We're not yeah. doing uh, it on you. Yeah. All right. Uh, we could we could kind of end it here unless if anyone has anything else, but 84 and a half is the over under on DraftKings. I'm going over. Yeah. 88. Yeah. 88. I assumed everyone. Yeah. I'll, I'll say over too. That seems yeah. like, what were they last year? Did they win 84 last year? Uh, 83. 83. 83, yeah. Um, but, and they're projected like right around there. But I think their actual like Pythagorean thing was like ninety wins, eighty nine or ninety okay. wins, and they're at least as good as they were last year. And the division still sucks. Yeah, yeah. I had a question I want to circle back to. It's way off topic from before, but you know, there's there's the luxury tax. There's no minimum like a um, poor a poor tax because no. that that's something that I I've, think there should it like hockey does that where it's like you have a cap floor and a cap ceiling. No, it's a hard cap, but I feel like there should if you're. What did you say the A's payroll was? Uh, it's like seventeen million less than it was opening day. Seventeen. Yeah. See, so like that should yeah. not be. No, that's that. That's, that should. You be should be like kind of right. Exactly. So it's like yes. if you're not going to. Yeah, it, but like, they don't want that. So here's why. Um, player union. You know that sounds like a, a good idea. It'll act as a, a salary cap instead of a salary floor. Well, the only way they're going to get a salary floor is if they put in a cap. And the players' union does not want a cap. They'll no, never, I ever, just ever but like, couldn't they? Ha- no, I don't. I don't. I know they'll never do a cap. But the, you don't think they could do like, hey, like if you if you're gonna, be, you just... can you can spend below this threshold the same way you can spend above it. But there is a tax on on both sides. Oh, I hadn't thought of it. Just like a that. tax. Just a tax. tax. Yeah. Um. So, the reason I've heard that there's no floor at all is because it'll teams will just spend to the floor and won't. Yeah. Have have any reason to go over. And that goes for like every team. Yeah. If you're doing that, right. So I don't. I don't know what the fix is. They need to fix it because baseball is at its, I think, like worst spot in a long time, especially with all the Shohei news. If that, if oh, anything yeah. comes yeah. of that. But I just um, mean like if I'm the A's and you see, hey, I can get Jordan Montgomery and I can get myself over the a yeah. penalty tax threshold by paying this guy fifty million dollars on paper, and then July comes around, I can then flip him. Now that I'm not penalized because I've hit the yeah, tax but it's floor. At the of, it's, it's at the end, end of the year. Yeah. Oh, it's at the end? Mm-hmm. I should yeah. flip that too. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. That that just struck me as something like that's something I thought hockey did well. I yeah. know they'll never do a – I know they'll never have a cap in baseball, but like, I feel like if you're going to have an upper limit cap, you should have a – or a tax, you should have a lower limit tax yeah. too. I, yeah, that's, I think that's fair. The I, I, I Baseball is in – a pretty pretty rough spot. Like uh, theoretically, the A's. I think the, what's the league min now? Seven fifteen. Seven fifty, maybe something like I that. I think it's seven fifteen okay. is the lowest a player can make. Um, and theoretically, they could have twenty six guys making seven fifteen. Yeah, I'm sure they're they tried their damnedest to get to do that to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I don't I don't know if it's in a bad spot. Why do you say it's in the worst spot? So yeah, I'm kind of curious yeah. about that. Too. I mean, here I'll pull this. I mean, I think you're in a worse spot. You hate <laughs> baseball more than you've ever hated it. I do. All right. My yeah, computer. Braves fans right now are like baseball. Well, yeah, baseball. Sweet. <laughs> what baseball's are we talking about? It's nice. Yeah. I mean, my because it does crazy, feel like you know the A's are in a the A's are bad, but once they go to Vegas, I mean, there there's a, there's an issue when the Mets are spending 316 million on their 40, and the uh, Oakland A's are spending 61. I agree. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. I saw another stat. If you took the four worst teams based on last year's record and made a like a, a super team out of those players or those rosters, it would still be a like very last bad place team. team. Yeah, yeah. They they're the last CBA. They didn't go far enough to discourage the the unfortunately the Cubs and Astros 
model from the early 2000s where it's like you either go for it or you tank mm -hmm. that was i mean they just didn't do enough to discourage that but hopefully with like realignment and when they expand a couple more teams then there's new playoff format you know anomaly yeah that i can't figure out how the fuck they do it every well year. they're the they're the team that's giving everybody else the excuse because yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like well, look at they could do it we could do it yeah they're disrupting they're like saying oh you can't do that and they're like yeah we can we're doing it and then it's like oh how do we do it but the Can't Rays, the Rays, the Rays, like I think the Rays go really deep into their farm is where they kind of shine. Yeah. Their yeah. model is trade all of their best players one year before their second yeah. year of arbitration, and somehow they just, Reload. just keep reloading. Yeah. I mean, their scouting infrastructure it has their, to be amazing. Like yeah. uh, one of my buddies that used to play for the White Sox, um, as he was ascending through the system, he was telling me a story about so they he would play in Charlotte and Durham was was really close to Charlotte so he would hang with a lot of the Rays AAA guys um just like on weekends or whatever and uh from it didn't matter if you're an undrafted like fifth year senior out of college that has zero shot the day you are a Ray you are you have the exact same expectation from film study all the way from low A short season ball to major league baseball and it's just a ma machine compared to other people it's like pro baseball there, university so some i forget the reliever some some reliever uh had had bounced around for a minute and this is when uh uh what's his name uh bloom was with the with the rays and um he just got lit up in a in a in a relief appearance and he gets a call it's a tampa area code or whatever and he's like oh fuck i'm getting here we go again i'm getting dfa'd i'm gonna have to look for a new team it was it was kind bloom on the phone and he's like hey man you gave up six runs tonight but your splitter action it had 14 inches of drop and typically only has 13 and a half your stuff was awesome tonight i want you to know to keep doing exactly what you're doing and you'll be golden and and he was golden after that and the rest is history and if that's how the rays were and if the conversation was different if it was the opposite that that player's mindset might be ruined for the ruined rest of the year. ruined or or ruined. he tries to change up what and then doing? It, it's yeah. like no, no, no. do exactly what you yeah. just did again, and you'll get and a you'll find result. success. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's yeah. organizational mm -hmm. philosophy, that right? Is. I think that was like maybe a. I'm going to go back to shitting on David Ross. I love David Ross. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think he, you guys, Andrew we, Miller, we, man, we that was love David. Ross. We love David guys, Ross, but David, David Ross, I feel like could like he's a fun guy, clubhouse like glue guy, but. Like I've heard, I've talked to the players that have been in the room when David Ross is not happy and it's not pretty. Like, I don't think you should ever lead by fear or coach by fear. And I think that that could really fuck up a player's mindset. I mean, we're human. I know they're the best at what they do, but like baseball's baseball's a mental grind. And yeah, the Rays, how the the Rays guy handled that was pretty cool to see because that that could be as a as a ball player like hearing that from somebody when you know you played like shit is like all the encouragement you need to like get yeah. to the next level. So that's pretty cool. It is Hoyer in trouble if they don't make the playoffs uh, in your eyes. I mean, so I don't think he will be, I think he should be. Okay. I think I, I let me put it to you this way. If they miss the playoffs again this year, um, I'll be writing an article that, I mean, and I think Hoyer is really smart. I think he's really good at his job. I think he is building up in a way that's smart and it's, freaking boring and sucks but it's probably smart That's a great way to put it it's boring yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's I, you know but it's four and a half years into you know how long like, should a rebuild how how take? long yeah. do you get i mean and and maybe the answer is like you are a great president um but we want a dave dombrowski type or someone who's just gonna get sling it you know yeah. Stellar, sling it. you yeah. still or depoto like someone who's yeah. just gonna start doing stuff yeah I think any GM for the Cubs will be unfair to to grade as a as a role as a GM because they're they're put into a box from the Ricketts. They're like, you know, yeah, that's, what, that's you why I didn't go to Winter Wonderland this year. We bought you regular. skids and skids of wood. You have to build the biggest house you can, but this is all the wood you're going to get. Yeah. It's like I don't think the, Jets the, ever the wood's done not it. bad though. The, wood, the wood's <laughs> great. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good cool. wood. It's, it's like how how does it feel simultaneously? Like the Cubs haven't spent in free agency, and then you go look back at the last few years, and you're like, well, I guess they did get Seiya and Stroman and Tyon and yeah. Shoda and Bellinger and Bellinger again. It's like they did do stuff, and their payroll is two thirty five, but it doesn't feel like we have a star. 
You know, no, that, that, that's kind of that's it. They don't yeah. have like Judd's been right more than he's like. I think he's hit more than he's missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I would put him on. I would I would say he needs to be entering twenty twenty five on the hot seat if the Cubs don't okay. make the playoffs this you year. I don't think that? he's going to be fired after. I that. don't know. I I don't. Not yeah. yeah. I mean I I mean I. Sarami is going to know more of that shit. So like, I just wish Jed would. I wish Jed was like, whatever you want, Jed. I mean, this is unrealistic, but like, yeah. here's a blank canvas. Go fucking paint exactly how you want it to look. But that's not real life. It's not. I think Jed's life. good. I think I do think Jed. Jed's super smart. Like I think he. I mean, it's not Theo. I think we got spoiled with Theo. Like, there's only a few Theo Epstein's in all of sports and all in the world. Like, so we're always going to compare him to Theo. So if you compare him to Theo, yeah, disappointing. I remember but, hearing Theo to be president of the Bears rumors, and everyone was like, "Yeah, all right, yeah, <laughs> like that could probably do it." Yeah, right. right. He's he's smart enough. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, You're I don't know. Still team Jed. I just want to see. I like. I understand the negative, and there's been a lot of negative around Jed, and I get it. And I'm like, yeah, you have a good good point, but there's just something that I yeah, think. Yeah, it, it, it could be I, worse. I. This is supposed to be fun, and it's not that fun right now. Yeah, <laughs> like. That, that's, well, I guess that's like, my biggest gripe as a fan. Yeah, like I, definitely I, not fun for the White Sox. It should be more <laughs> fun than it is. Yeah, and I think that's like the, the I think the big fear with the Ricketts at this point, where it's like. How many games do we have to win to keep it completely full and people largely complacent? And maybe not a lot. Maybe it that is. Maybe it is I, eighty-five okay. wins. Okay, yeah. I'm going to play devil's advocate here because I have been increasingly following the Bulls over the last five, ten years of week, more oh, than I used. Sorry to, to hear that. Yeah, Whoa, no, yeah. terrible. That's an opposite. It, we started BM Bulls, <laughs> so okay. I had All to right. start paying attention. <laughs> uh, that owner compared to the Ricketts, it's not the same thing. Yeah. And and I'll tell you one more thing that. that Everyone misses the mark on this one part about Tom Ricketts. The biggest and best thing he does is not get involved in baseball decisions because the worst thing in the world is when, you know, Scott Boris calls up, you know, uh, Steve Cohen or the mm-hmm. owner of the Angels, the owner of the Nationals, these guys that he has relationships with and saddles them with contracts that their presidents or their GMs didn't want to sign. Tom Ricketts does stay out of baseball operations. He says, here's your budget. You can do anything you want within that. Now we can say that budget should be higher. Yeah. But yeah. as an owner that stays out, he's on the better side of that. And That's I've true. seen a lot of owners in baseball and other sports not do that. Talk to uh, me the about- The guy to your left is- No, no, no. <laughs> I, I want to hear what it- Because I- Derek Rose's knee, like, once it fell apart, I'm like- He's a Bulls player. Everybody, <laughs> all of my teams are, and this is right when like Tressman was with the Bears and the White Sox were in a boarded fetus of a rebuild number, like six at that point. And all of my teams were just awful. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm a baseball, f- football guy, basketball, like I don't need it. I don't need to obsess over Derrick Rose. So I haven't followed the Bulls for, I, I was opposite of you. And what has he done to the Bulls? Well, from he, your perspective, I mean, it, it, he is like the definition of meddling, doing, doing, let's do whatever the bare minimum is mm-hmm. to, to make this, you know, um, a team that people will come and see. I mean, they are the, the whole continuity thing. I know it's coming from the front office, but that's because it's blessed from above. And they are just ecstatic to be seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth seed teams yeah. i mean because we i don't remember when that quote is from but ryan has a quote where it was like something along the lines no of, he he told it to uh uh david samson who was he was in the ownership group of the dave Marlins. knows this quote well yeah, yeah. i uh, imagine right they'll always dangle the carrot just keep just right. finish second um it'll always keep fans coming back because they'll think that you're just about to get over the top yeah but i mean just he's there's way too much i, I don't want to hear or see tom ricketts you know what i mean i don't want to yeah. hear or see an owner that's and the the th- the best thing an owner can do is stay out of baseball and give a big enough budget mm-hmm. to your to your front office. So, you know, at half of that he is getting an A on because he never almost never comments on yeah. baseball ever. And it's just if we think his budget is high enough, well, that's a different conversation. And I think that's where people get they look around Wrigleyville now. Mm-hmm. It's like he bought up everything. The new valuation for. Cubs today was over five billion. Yeah. What did he buy for? Eight hundred, right? Eight hundred, nine hundred yeah. million. Yeah, right. I mean, so. what are we? T- t- the best business to buy right now is a major league baseball team. Yeah, for appreciation. 
Like, yeah. Yeah. that's what bothers it's me. Better than real estate, which my, he has a ton of around yeah, Wrigley yeah. Field. Yeah. My, then it's like you get the rev, you do the scoreboards. Yeah. You do the, the, the winter wonderland. Yeah, that's got against the murky network. Yeah, the money. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I was going to say, like, the one thing that I can't wrap my head around is, like, he knew this marquee network was coming for a while. And if I, it's fun to say, if I was the owner of the Chicago Cubs, but if, if like, if I was and I knew marquee was coming, like maybe just because I'm still bitter that we didn't get Bryce Harper when I thought we should have gotten Bryce Harper. How good like, would Bryce Harper look on this team still? Yeah, don't I don't I don't even want to go I don't even <laughs> want to go there. Like shit, my blood pressure is gonna go. Yours will. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Want to have a blood pressure off? Because I'm I, pretty sure I will win. White Sox, Dave. I would love to lose to you in a blood pressure off. I would. I would love to. Someone go. go get one of those pump things. Go to Walgreens. But, go to go Walgreens. Walgreens. My point is, you have Marquee. We all knew it was coming, and it's like, then they're like, oh, wait, these loyal WGN uh, viewers who have gotten Cubs baseball for free all over the country for 40, 50 years, like, don't want to pay for Marquee Network now. And it's like, if I'm Tom Ricketts, I'm getting Bryce Harper, I'm getting, like, whoever. I don't, I don't remember who else. Make it the greatest I'm, show I'm, on actually, earth. I am yeah. making that team must-see TV on paper so that people will want to subscribe, and you would have made your money yeah. back fivefold by... Everybody be like, I'm not. I'm. I'll pay fifteen dollars to watch. You saw what? It just never. The canceled. day the Phillies signed him, their season tickets went up like four hundred percent or whatever. I mean, the nobody bought. I can. This is one. This is probably the only piece of relative information that I can bring to this podcast. Um, being in sales, we didn't really sell a lot of Cody Bellinger shirts last year. Why not? Because everybody knew he was a one year rental. At so best, like, like maybe, now, maybe huh, four months. Now, huh. you, now you sign him to a couple. Well, we think we hope three years. But at least we know that there's a commitment there. Like our Bellinger shirts have been going, we can't keep them in stock. And that's like, what do you think the Cubs are going to do on their merch and their revenue sale of Bellinger jerseys? They're going to make that that $20 million that we've been like waiting all off season to see if Jed would cave or spend the money or go up or whatever, play the Scott Boris game. Like, do they, they have to think about what all of the, I think in economics it's called positive externalities. I think it, like okay. all the positive externalities of signing a guy like Cody and that brings in revenue in places that they weren't getting revenue before. So like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just I'm just gonna stick to t shirts, but like <laughs> well, you, just, th- you just threw that phrase out there that I already forgot. So I think you should positive you know, I mean, yeah. 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 That was yeah. an econ mind. You're better than putting, yeah. Cubs. Better yeah. putting text yeah. on shirts. You are yeah. more than that. Uh, uh, just you are that more word, than that. I could tell you're more don't than that. Don't sell yourself short. Yeah, guys. you're tall. <laughs> Man, played shortstop I at really all this. male Division three school. I did. <laughs> That's a good, got a good beard. Yeah. That's a good beard. That is yeah. a good beard. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Guys, thanks so, so this much. This is a this is a gift for you. A little beer balm. A little beer balm for you. Hmm. There you go. Right. I was hold this here for product yeah, place. Thank you. <laughs> so you get uh, positive externality. My senior year at North Central, we were beating Wabash in the quarterfinals. I want to say to go to football or baseball. In football, it was twenty-eight to nothing in the fourth quarter, and we blew it. I want to say. Yeah. What year? It would have been 2011. I was a left turn. 2012. <laughs> yeah. 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 This was the playoffs? Yeah. Playoffs. Yes. Yep. That was my senior year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Uh, boys, thanks for coming in. So, Rami, where can people find your stuff? Uh, BleacherNation.com, and then I'm on Twitter at- You're like, the Bulls guy. Uh, yeah, I'm the Bulls yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, just redid my stupid bet from a few years ago. Ian Happ let off the season with the home run. I jumped into Lake Michigan. I don't know if you guys remember that, yep, but man. I just tweeted it back out since he's leading off. I'll dye my hair blue for a month. Oh, Beautiful. Ooh, we go. beautiful. Ooh, it's a out, commitment. Yeah. That, yeah. It had to get- I haven't checked. It has to get at least 1,000 retweets. So. Okay. Putting that <laughs> out there, but- Let me see if I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so go follow Michael, and then- uh, uh, Joe, obviously, obvious shirts. Obviousshirts.com. Yeah. Um, obvious underscore shirts. Also, check out Beard Balm Beard Guys. There we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, the original beard company. Thank you. There we go. Thank yep. you, Joe. Appreciate it, guys. Go Cubs. Yeah, go, go Cubs. Cubs. Go Cubs. Big year. Before we get totally back into it, though, Chief, we want to talk about making the switch from a cartridge razor to a safety razor today mm-hmm. with Vander Hagen. It's the best. Mm-hmm. The absolute best. Let me tell you about German Steel. Tell me. Ice cold German steel. That ger- All engineering advances in my brain come out of Germany. 
So if they're making razor blades, you're going to want to get in on it, and you can do that with Vanderhagen. The safety razors allow you to get a closer, more comfortable shave. The use of one-blade razors prevent uh, nicks and cuts while making your skin feel smoother than ever. The best part, these blades cost as little as $1 a piece and last anywhere from three to five shaves. This will save you thousands of dollars over the years compared to the cost of cartridge razors. The blades are ice-tempered, like Chief said, stainless steel blades from Germany that are sharp enough to give you the perfect shave. The handle is made to last a lifetime, so the only recurring purchase you will have is for the blades. Check out your local Target and Rite Aid to get yourself a Vanderhagen safety razor today. Right down the street at Target. Yep. Yeah. That's simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hey, so there you heard it. That was Michael and uh, Joe. Uh, appreciate them jumping on. Yep. Uh, just great to talk some Cubs. Yeah. Great to talk some Cubs. Because yep. we don't, you know. This it's, guy, he always circles it. He can't think outside the White Sox. Yeah. He, did a, he did a better job of it today, but it was nice to have some genuine. Uh, it was four to four against one, strength in numbers today. Yes. So it, it worked out great. That was nice. Obviously, like uh, our teams on uh, Madison Street are dog shit, mm -hmm. and the Bears are just uh, in in limbo, waiting for Caleb Williams. So they're just, you know, they're waiting. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So it was. But we're it, pointing it was nice upwards. It is. We're pointing yeah, upwards. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I think the Bears, the Hawks, and the Cubs all have a chance to be pretty good in, in the next two to three. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it never works out that way. Ever. Well, can't we just have 60% of the teams? I'm not asking for all of them. Let the Jerry teams wallow, <laughs> Jerry wallow teams in the basement. Just, yeah. Just suck. Yeah. yeah like, no, if, if the Bulls got disbanded, I would like, okay. Like, <laughs> no. I think, don't say that. I think it's been so long since, like, I've enjoyed watching I know, and I'm games. down on them, too, but don't say that. Yeah. <sighs> Don't say that. They had Jordan. Don't that, not in front of Lance, especially. Yeah, sorry, Lance. Take, take that bag. I, Stuff. I've always been the other team on Madison Street, first and foremost. Yeah, but don't be that hockey guy that can't like both. I like basketball. I play basketball every Friday. I love basketball. But if that, if I was gonna get rid of one here, it'd probably be them. I would say the White Sox, but I can't do that to my guy. Just make him look. Why not? Why not? Because he'd have... be happier. He'll no, have nothing to care about. He'll be just talking about selling ceramic pots. He'll be... <laughs> cast iron. Yeah, cast iron pots. No, he he would just li it'd be like he'd just be walking around like living in a, a white padded room. That would be his whole life with nothing to care about. Is that much different than what he does now? I suppose a White Sox Dave Dennis basically a fucking. That he's. I mean, it's it's basically HGTV. HGTV now. It's like he's got. He's having cast iron pots and pan restored. He's got a new kitchen. He's gonna be. He's planting herbs, spices on his back deck. Like he's, he's a whole different man. Gonna be a real life Chip and Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Do you watch some? Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah. I've seen it. It's. I don't watch it consistently. I went through a phase in my life, probably seven eight years ago, maybe longer. That I watched a ton of HGTV. The only thing I really like, well, you know how Danny does his like uh, Shark Tanks is mine is House Hunters. Like I'll be flipping through and I'll have that on as background noise, especially if I like the area. Yeah. Like if they're in Chicago, I'm interested in that. If they're in someplace cool, if it's House Hunters International, Ireland, or maybe some tropical place, I'll watch that too. But that is like my kind of go to. I haven't really gotten into that yet, but like I said, I... It's so easy to just turn your brain off because you're always... Because there's always three houses and they have these people that are going through the real estate agent and then at the end, they're like, oh, they're going to go with this one. You just kind of guess against yourself, which one which one would I get? The, the fixer-upper for less for 60 grand under budget or, you know, and then you just pick your house. It sounds kind of legit. It is. It's it, There's a reason why there's like... There's got to be... There might be a hundred thousand episodes of that show. I'm gonna look it up. What's your official guess? Obviously, that's an embellishment. No, I don't know that it is. If they've if it's been on for thirty years, and they have House Hunters and House Hunters International doing thirty episodes a year, it's it's got to be a big number. I'd say it's over fifty thousand episodes. All right, so it is. Uh, it's been on since 1999. Okay, so 25 years. Yeah. It has 1,900 episodes plus, it says. No. Yeah. I'm bad at math. 242 seasons? That's what I mean. That's the number what? that I thought. Because it's like they do Dude. like. So how can that be? How can it. House Hunter is the fucking Walking Dead, dude? Well, is that. How many. How 
House Hunter. The families are reported to make a thousand for appearing in the series, while fifteen hundred for House Hunters International. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's because that's a newer show. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Man, I would have guessed it was higher than I don't. Know, but that's the thing where I was thinking it was thirty episodes per season, and there's two hundred forty-two seasons. I knew there was like an insane amount of seasons. And they're just never going to stop. Why would they? Why well, real estate's always booming. Yeah, always on the market. Million dollar mansion. Yeah, I haven't yeah. much. Haven't really got into the HGTV. Yeah, give it, a, give it a try. It, it is like a turn your brain off, but like you, because you don't have to like watch. Like you're doing something else. You're on your phone. Then you look up. I'm like, oh, here's the next house. That's like my favorite. Yeah, I love Shark Shark Tank's. Like it's perfect. It's like Bar that. Rescue. Yeah, Bar. It, it is in that same vein. That is maybe that should be a blog. Like the top ten best. Turn your brain off. Yeah, well, we did the Hangover Draft with Brianna. Remember that? Yeah, we had to pick a show for that. Yeah. A brain off show? Yeah. And I, I I remember being like upset. Oh, Pawn Stars was on there. Yep. Pawn uh, Stars is a good one. Hold on. I'm pulling up the hungover graphic. I know those were three that got drafted for sure. Yep. Uh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> someone drafted Armageddon, which I assume is quite sad. Has to be. Has to be. <laughs> uh, Law and Order SVU, I believe that was Brianna. Okay. I've never um, seen that show. I've never off- done any of the Law and Orders. The Office, which was what I picked, I believe. And then uh, House Hunters, which I, I took it. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and then See? Pawn- and then Pawn Stars, which yeah. someone took. Yeah, I guess. No, maybe it was Carl who took. I don't know. Whatever. I love House Hunters. Regardless. Though. Yeah. Um, That was the draft. Yeah, House yeah. You've been on this train for a long time. I, I remember I was probably when I started or started admitting it to watching House Hunters was probably like 2010 or HGTV in general. It's 2010. And then it's my favorite uh, thing every like January 1. They do the HGTV Dream House giveaway. And I always sign up for that to see if I can get a free house somewhere. As long as it's someplace cool. That'd be nice. It was like Vermont. Where would, you de- where would you decline a house? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't decline a house anywhere. But there are certain like. They started doing, they used to do it and they would give away a house and then people were like, well, I just, I can't afford the taxes on this. Mm. So I just immediately have to sell it. So then they started giving you the house plus like 250, 500 or whatever it is to cover the taxes. And so there are certain places where it's, I, I remember there was one in Vermont and one in Utah where you're allowed to like enter to win every day. I think I entered to win like 90% of the days until the drawing. Like I wanted those houses. There are other ones where I only do it once. It's like, "Ah, I don't need that Scottsdale house. And I'm just going to sell that house anyways. So (laughs) that's kind of where my, where my brain goes on those, but it's a great, it's a great show. And the houses are, they're always like sick, but like, I can't, I'm not cut out for Arizona life. Yeah. Evidently. Yeah. Can't even hike hike a fucking. No, I did hike it. Actually. I did. (laughs) I got made it. Lance. He did make it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Took a while, but we were there. Yeah. Um. Anything else before we wrap up? I mean, like I said, Bears. Like we're just in limbo. I like yeah. that Ryan Poles defended himself. Yep. Versus RG three. Like, yep. Obviously, dumbass comment by RG three. Mm-hmm. Um. I. You could tell that he probably wasn't as torn up about the Justin Fields thing as a lot of the fans were, but you could tell he's like he genuinely loves him too. Yeah. He's like my son was our, was uh, Justin Fields for Halloween. Like you know we like. I feel like Justin Fields is a really good kid. Yeah. I really want him to do well in Pittsburgh. For sure. Yeah. For not sure. too well. Not yeah. better than Caleb. Yeah. Like no one should <laughs> have any yeah, no one yeah. should have any ill will, but right. should definitely yeah. like not have you know. Yeah. So now it's just like we know we got who our quarterback is and like We just gotta get there. I wanna get there. I wanna see who we take at nine. I wanna see like That's the big discussion. Yeah, this this little inching period is just It's a dead period. It's the only part of the calendar where the NFL hasn't like totally yeah. Dominated. I do have a little fun fact for you. What's that? So the Bears are in the Hall of Fame game. Okay. They played in the Hall of Fame game in 2018, 12 and 4, won the division. They time before that they played in it, 2005, won the division. Time before that, 1990. So it was the only three times they've been in the Hall of Fame game. All three times they won the division, made the playoffs. Over under is currently set at eight and a half wins, but they are minus money to uh, make the playoffs. So does this mean you're predicting uh, thirteen? I'm not predicting again? anything. I don't think this year, but I did go through the schedule. I'm like, I don't know, eleven, twelve wins. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, because I, I, I do, I find myself watching like YouTube's of Caleb and 
and uh, and then like the receivers that they could get at nine, and it's just hard not to get excited about what that offense could look like. Yeah, yeah, and I think I've I've I don't really care what they do at nine, but I have come around to the idea of fuck it, let's just try to light up scoreboards and go get, go get neighbors or a Dunze or whoever whoever the receiver is left at nine, and just like let's have some fun. Let's do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was like I like that. That the comment when he was defending himself to our, about RG three, polls did. He's like, you know, we were hired to break the cycle. He's like, we didn't want to, you know, start this whole thing over. Like, we're here because we don't we don't want to be the same old bears. And it does feel like, you know, like he he's kind of stuck. Like he had to, he came in like hey, we got to tear it down, tore it down, and then he's kind of like you know identified the positions of value, the end quarterback you know receiver and he's like addressed those in a big way those high value positions and you look at it, it's like a it's it's a pretty good team on paper and then he did have a comment where he explained like the ryan bates move too he's like it's really important for us to have a veteran center with a rookie quarterback so we can call out all the uh you know some of the, the blitzes and help with that pre-snap stuff take some of the load off of a rookie quarterback so he's like, we're thrilled to have him, and that's why we got him. So I like that too. So like he's, you know, he's really, he's not just shooting from the hip. He seems like a very measured, planned out guy. Got a plan. Yeah. So a it's a, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm trying. I'm trying not to be too to excited. Keep, to yeah. Keep measured. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, then we can wrap this up. Happy opening day, everybody. Yep. I hope it's great. I hope you have a good time. I hope you drink uh, Miller Lite responsibly. And, yeah, that's it. See you in the uh, parking lot. See you at the ballpark uh, today and Monday. See you.